thank you for joining me today. We are going to be sculpting a monster. We are using Sculptress, which is an outdated program, but you can download that for free. The link will be in the description. We are playing the video at 500 times speed, and the music you are hearing is music that I wrote specifically for this video. And you will be able to download that music for free from Patreon. You can use the music and this monster model in your projects. So if you have a game and you just need some monster graphics and some music, I'll put the link in the description and I will be making more resources to help you with your projects. So check in from time to time. So what we are doing here first is just creating the basic shape of our creature. We have the basic shape and then we come in and add form later on. Things that depict the anatomical structure of the creature that help the viewer understand what the musculature is, the bones that are underneath the flesh, what sort of effect gravity has on the weight. I'm considering a sort of amphibious creature here, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe some sort of lizard or a frog type head. So you can see you just make the basic shapes, you adjust them, and you can use the various tools to adjust the proportions and the placement of the limbs until everything seems right to you. And you can really get lost in the weeds here, and you can spend hours and hours just fine-tuning and adjusting things. So I first work on the basic shape, then I start adding finer details like bones and muscles. And you are not actually create, creating a real creature here. You are not actually creating bones or muscle. What you are doing is creating something that expresses the idea of a creature. You're expressing the idea of bones or muscle. That's important to keep in mind, or you can end up getting stuck. You can end up wasting too much time thinking that you are creating something that actually exists, but you are not actually creating verbatim. You are creating a representation of something. And so what is important is expression. What are you saying? What are you depicting? How do you want people to feel about the object which you are expressing? Now you can see I'm shrinking down the hands. They started out a big, a big and, and chunky uh, Cheeto mittens just there, so I've, I've shrunken them down. You then have to make sure that you have some cakes in the back of the creature there as that is where a lot of muscle is for a creature. So you need to make sure that there is some definition to the cakes in the back and that there is a sense of muscle. We want to be careful working close to the middle of the model here where we can end up pinching the geometry because we are using mirror, um, a symmetrical, uh, symmetrical sculpting here, and you can end up causing problems if you're not careful. So. Um, the, basically the least important parts are really underneath the feet and the cakes of the humanoid because those are the parts that are least likely to be seen by the player. I'm trying to consider the curvature of the spine. It's good to take a look at anatomy books, have a look at human spines and, and the spines of animals, how the bones connect, what looks natural, and you can apply that knowledge when you are sculpting a creature and then you can envision what the bones would be like inside the creature. You can see now that I have the shape I'm starting to add a bit more form now. I'm trying to express a sense of tendons underneath the skin here. Uh, the joints of the elbows, the wrist. You can see that I am trying to add a sense of muscle attachments. Now in human anatomy muscles are attached to features on our skeletal structure called tuberosities. Tuberosities are basically little bumps on our bones that allow the muscles to attach to the bones, otherwise the muscles have nowhere to attach to. So when I'm sculpting, I like to consider where the tuberosities might be, where the muscles might attach uh, to the creature here. I'm adding a bit of form to the palm 
of the creature here, imagining where the muscles might be. We're going to shape out the hand a little bit. You can see that as we sculpt, the polygon count does increase until it gets higher and higher and higher. This tool and any modern sculpting tool will have a brush that allows you to reduce the poly count. The higher the polygon count, the more difficult it will be for your game engine to render, the more expensive it will be. If you have a high poly count, then this model will cause the frame rate to drop. So it's important to keep in mind a balance. If you lower the polygon count, then there will be less definition, but it will be easier for your program to render. So it's important to consider these when you are creating graphics and developing a video game. You can see I'm trying to smoothen out the cheeks here. Um, you don't want them too big, you don't want them too narrow, and I'm trying to consider if this was some sort of frogman or amphibian man, um, how, how thick would those cheeks be? And I, I think on a frog, perhaps, maybe it might be a bit smoother and sleeker. I'm trying to get a sense of the clavicle bones. I want the neck to be quite thick so it has a frog-like appearance to it and I'm, I'm trying to define the um, jawline here so it feels amphibious while not necessarily exactly being a frog. Next I'm carving out eye holes and I want to make sure that these eyes are placed in a way that doesn't look too adorable but doesn't look too threatening. I, I there, There's a balance to monsters to creature design and that there has to be some degree of of relatability and depending on the project that you're working on i like to have a degree of grotesqueness and a degree of cuteness to my monsters and i believe if you have both of those elements in there it's it's more interesting to look at if something is only grotesque then it's it's not that interesting to look at and if something is only cute i think it might make people not see that creature as a threat. So I like to consider having a mixture, a balance of cuteness and grotesqueness. And I try to have some sort of relatability, something visually relatable. It's easy when your creature has the human form because we already identify that as something that, that could possibly exist because it resembles the human body. But um, it's, it's something to consider with creature design. Now, I don't necessarily want this guy to be too scary. I would like you to be able to use this in, in projects if you just need a monster. So I'm, I'm trying to balance out the polygon count uh, and the definition of the creature. You can see here I am now using the reduce brush to reduce the polygon count, and that will make the creature easier to render for the game engine. Here we are now entering paint mode and we will wait for this process to complete. I will go ahead and add a set here. I've prepared some textures that I will be using. I'm going to make some adjustments. I have symmetry on right now. First, I'm going to apply a base coat for the green skin. I want to make sure that I cover all the gray areas here. The gray area means that it is unpainted, so I'm just covering over of those with a base coat. Now, if I were taking this more seriously, if this was a project where I needed to spend more time on this, what I would do is I would expect export these objects and I would have the eyes uh, be a separate object from the creature so that I could apply a different material and I could animate the eyes. But because I am working on this project that is meant to be a free model to use uh, and it, it doesn't need to be you know, quadruple A quality. I'm just going to paint the eyes here, but surely uh, if you have more time, you would separate those objects. You would uh, apply a different texture to the eyes and you could rig those eyes up to animate in the game engine. In this situation though, because I'm just quickly working on this, uh, I won't be doing that. So you can see, I just want to separate the different parts of the creature here. Once I have the basic details painted, I'm going to turn off the symmetry. Now, when you have symmetry on, it takes up less space in your texture map. 
I mean, texture map is an image that basically defines the color detail that you see here, but it is symmetrical and it does not look organic when you have it perfectly symmetrical. So I've turned off the symmetry. Now I'm painting over the center line there. You can see the belly does not look quite right. It's perfectly symmetrical. So I will paint over the belly and make it look more organic and natural. It would be quite upsetting if it looked perfectly symmetrical, but if you are going for a style matching the time period of the 90s or early 2000s, then you can leave the symmetry on because that is how graphics looked in the 90s and early 2000s. So style matching is also one approach. Now I am painting on these black spots as patterns, but you can see they stand out a fair bit. So I'm going to paint them on first, then I will be uh, blending them once I know where these spots will be here. Okay. It's important that your overall design feels coherent and that it all blends well. Once I have these spots all painted in, you can see I reduce the hardness and the strength of my green brush and I am painting over the black spots and you can see I'm now blending them in so they fit more naturally in with the green skin of this fun little creature. Yes, very nice. Blending that in, that's blending in quite nicely here. That's looking quite good. Very nice. I like to think this guy maybe wanders around a little forced, you know, you don't have to use him as an enemy. You're free to use him in your projects. He could be the protagonist in your game if you want. He could be your friend, he could be the player character, or an enemy. Um, you can add objects to him like a hat, swords, a monocle, um, maybe a little scarf. It's whatever you would like. Give him a little, a little backpack. So I was testing a look with some eyes and I was wondering if I should give him maybe frog eyes, but I decided that I didn't really like that look. And what I will do is I will make the eyes very shiny. We'll load this into Mixamo.com. This is a free service that was absorbed, then butchered by Adobe, but it's still functional. This is a process called auto rigging. It used to take human beings literally forever to manually rig up. Rigging is the process of applying bones to a video game character, a 3D model, so that the model can be animated. These days we use auto riggers. You can see that our character is now ready to be animated. I've downloaded a bunch of animations for this character, and when you download this from the link in the description, it will have all of the animations there ready for you to use. I'll select the eyes here in the map, and I will increase the specularity. So now you can see the eyes have this beadiness, a creepy creepiness to it, but it gives them that shiny look to the eyes here. And let's go ahead and load the animations in and put them in the scene. And I'm going to adjust the character so that he looks a little shiny, a little more shiny than he is right now. He's not shiny enough. So there we go. That gives him just a little bit more uh, slickness to his overall skin. That seems decent. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like uh, at different angles. Let's pose it around with some different angles and lighting. Now, we have applied our albedo. Albedo map defines the color, and our specularity map defines the shininess. What we are missing currently is the normal map, so we will apply the normal map. Now the normal map defines the bumpiness of the object helps us add more visual detail. It does not affect the geometry, just the way that the geometry casts light. It, it catches light and, and shadows in a certain way. You can see here at full detail. And this is our finished creature. So I hope you've enjoyed spending some time with me today. I hope you've enjoyed watching the sculpting, the rigging, and the animating process. This is free for you to use. The download link is 
in the description. This is available on Patreon, but you do not need to be a paying member. This is free for everyone. And also the music which I created for this video is free. I will be creating 3D models like this and music for you to use in your projects long term for the foreseeable future. But you don't have to pay me anything. If you would like to pay me back, then there is something you can do, and that something is for you to work hard, do your best, and no matter what anyone says to you, believe in yourself. Find something to believe in, chase after your dreams even if it seems impossible, work hard, do your best, and that is how you can pay me back. I will keep making more of these for you to help you with your projects, so please stay tuned for more. Take care. Be well.